Today in the news, we got some BIOS flashing, a possible delay, and a couple computer cases. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. With the release of their Navi GBUs, AMD has put a VBIOS cap on clock speeds for overclocking. Now, this isn't really a problem since the locked frequencies are high enough compared to the regular boost clocks of those cards, and if you really wanted to go past those limits, you could at your own risk with the soft power play table mod. But there is another way of extracting performance from a GPU besides overclocking. That method is BIOS flashing, and it's actually possible to do on the R RX 5700. WCCF Tech posted an article on what you can expect if you flash an RX 5700 XT BIOS into a standard RX 5700. Now BIOS flashing, while easy, is quite a risky move if you have a reference card. You could brick your card with no possibility for recovery, or the thermals could just exceed the heatsink's threshold. In any case, once the flashing was applied to the card, performance did rise a considerable amount. In Firestrike Extreme, it gained 873 points, which is an 8% bump in performance compared to a stock RX 5700 and only 3.5% slower than the XT model. In Time Spy, it got a bump of 6% over stock and is 5% slower than a stock 5700 XT. They also did a test with plus 20% on the power limit slider and the performance went even higher, with the RX 5700 beating the 5700 XT in Firestrike Extreme and getting really close in time spy. I think the lack of cores in the 5700 made the difference in time spy. So what's the difference between this and the power play table mod that we saw a few weeks back? Well, it's mainly the fact that this is more locked in. With this mod, the card essentially thinks it's an XT model, which means that if you ever put it in a different PC or reset your system, it will keep those settings, whereas the soft power play table mod happens on the Windows registry side, which means if you plop that card on a different PC, well, your settings will be gone. As for the downside of BIOS flashing, well, in this case, your card will be sucking up a lot more power. If you only do the BIOS flash, it will add about 40 watts to your total system draw, and changing the power limit will make it skyrocket past the XT with an extra 110 watts. So yeah, it's gonna run hot. Next up, a lot of you guys have been asking about more information on the Ryzen 9 3950X. Well, what we've known so far is that it would release in September. I thought it would be out on the 7th, since AMD really seems to like the number 7. You know, all the Ryzen and Navi stuff got out on the 7th of July, Epic Rome was launched on the 7th of last month, and the Radeon 7 was released on February 7th. But no, according to a listing from Digitech, a German online retailer, the card will release on the 30th. It also says on the listing that they received official information from AMD that the delivery in September is not guaranteed. If this info is in fact directly from AMD, maybe we won't see the 16 core CPU until, let's say, October 7th? While this possible delay is definitely disappointing, it does satisfy my OCD a little bit. Now, the fact that it says it's not guaranteed means it's still possible that it releases this month, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. And closing up for AMD, Guru3D found two new roadmaps showing Zen and RDNA. The Zen slide shows us what we already knew. Zen 3's design is complete and uses the 7 nanometer plus process. As for Zen 4, it is still in design. The more interesting slide is the RDNA one, telling us that RDNA 2 will be on the 7 nanometer plus process. If RDNA 2 will power the rumored RX 5800 and up, then it probably won't be ready until mid 2020 since it's still in design phase and it's not complete. So yeah, guess we might have to wait a little longer than we thought for the high-end Navis. Moving on to some case news, it looks like Fantex got a bit excited and introduced a bunch of new stuff. First is another entry in the P series of cases. It's called the P360X and it's kind of a blend between the P350X and the P400. It has the side panel of a P350X with the LED strip between the basement and the tempered glass panel and it has the front panel of a P400 but with slits on the sides for airflow. The slits also have some LEDs on it and it's all a RGB so you can get some pretty nice color effects going on. The P400 was actually my first case experience with Fantex and I absolutely love it 
despite the fact that it has really bad airflow. Their latest P400A tries to fix that problem with a full frontal grille design at the front, but in my opinion, it just doesn't look as good. This one though, the P360X, I can get on board with. Plus, it's budget friendly at $69. The next case is the Evolve Shift Air. It's pretty much the same thing as the original Evolve Shift, but this time with fabric mesh as the side panels for airflow. Lastly, for all the RGB goodness, they also announced some neon ARGB strips. It's going to be pretty weird installing these. I mean, they do come with motherboard adapters, so you can route them like this, but still, all of those products should be available this month. If you were expecting me to talk about the Pixel 4 or the new iPhones, it just really wasn't interesting in my opinion. The new iPhones are better, but the design didn't change except for the cameras at the back and the pukey green color. Oh yeah, and you also got slow fees. As for the Pixel 4, it's literally out there with people reviewing it. So yeah, I'm more excited about actually testing out the Solus sensor, and I'm glad they removed the notch. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below as usual. Uh, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. If I sound sick, it's because it's just allergies. I'm not actually sick again. That would have been... Take care. What? What am I saying? Sometimes I impress myself with my randomness. Ha <laughs> ha!